So we, we will start our session today. I think afternoon everybody is a little tired due to this food and all. Mm -hmm. So my name is Abdullah Alhamdi, as mentioned by uh, Tracy. So I have nine of experience in asset integrity and RPI. So um, I'm accountable now for aromatic plants in Okio complex. So I think now we, we can start our presentation. Our presentation is about RPI utilization and value case in Okio. Uh, so initially we will start from, uh, from the agenda of the presentation. And the oh, sorry. Yeah, this is our presentation, RPI utilization and value case in Okio. So our agenda for today about Okio RPI milestone in OQ, then we will go to the RPI dashboard in OQ as well, RPI concept and also RPI workflow benefits and limitation, and uh, optimization summary, this is a value case from our study, latest study, and RPI con as a continuous improvement journey. So <clears throat> I think nobody knows about OQ, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. So Okio is a, na a national petroleum investment company of Oman, wholly owned by the government of Oman. Uh, in addition to oil and gas exploration and production, the, uh, the company also invests in power generation, energy, transportation, infrastructure, oil refining, petrochemicals, manufacturing. Our presence in Almost entire entire world, we are having branches in U.S., in Mexico, in Brazil. We have also in Spain. We have in U.K., Germany, uh, India, Pakistan, UAE, China, and other other companies. Um, we are investing in clean energy. We are investing also in upstream, in downstream, in green also, commercial and logistic, as you hear in these slides. So this one we can. So my colleagues now will explain you about right. the RBI journey with OQ. Thank you, Abdullah. Uh, finally, I got the opportunity at least to express myself. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Shihab again, and it's very, very pleasure to, to stand up in front of you guys here and give a little experience on what basically has uh, OQ went through by implementing GEAPM. So we will not go through the whole GEAPM, we will be trying to focus on the RBI uh, point of view and the implementation on the, basically the pressurized vessel equipment here. Uh, of course, the other features are there, as reliability is there, RCM, uh, root cause analysis, all those things, but still not that much uh, implemented as RBI in GEAPM. So <clears throat> here you can see the time uh, that the transfer has been done uh, in OQ uh, from time-based to risk-based inspection, basically. So in 2011, I think a uh, decision was trying to be made on what tools to be used uh, on evaluating our risk and trying to basically get down that much of assets uh, to be inspected and to, to go through the turnarounds, okay? And it was a big decision I think has been taken to basically in 2012 agree to go with GEAPM as our risk-based uh, inspection uh, evaluation system. So uh, identification of Meridium uh, with the vendor, the, the beginning of our kickoff meeting with the GEAPM to implement it in, in, in OQ assets. Uh, as my colleague mentioned, we have uh, plenty of assets. We have uh, uh, downstream, upstream, we have uh, polypropylenes, all those kind of plants where we are taking care in, in OQ. All right, so yeah, uh, after an agreement on, on basically implementing GEAPM, it was a very excessive work to be done in 2012, moving to 2015. So I have, or we have listed the achievement that has been done in 2015, which represents the whole years of work has been done by the company and uh, by the colleagues in the company. But the, the thing that in 2012 and 2015, 
because of the big amount of data need to be analyzed and need to go through the, all those clarification and verification before it enter to the system. So we assure a better risk evaluation. So we, we, we basically ask for some uh, third party support to help us at least on, on importing those, those uh, data in system with uh, a supervision of, of OQ uh, employee. But you will see later on how, how, it, how it affected our, our system by doing that thing. So in 2015, we achieved a full uh, RBI uh, analysis done to all our assets in MAF, SR1, a, uh, aromatic polypropylene pla uh, plant, and we have also achieved an integration with the SAP team in 2015. So whatever is in SAP system, it's supposed to be integrated with our Meridium uh, since 2015. And you know that big amount of interfacing happening between those two systems. All right, and also we have initiated IOW, the integrated operating window. It, it has been initiated in 2015. As you all know, it's very effective, very, very important uh, uh, in, in basically affecting all the asset and all the integrity there. So it has been initiated, a procedure has been done uh, with, with, the, with the group of people to basically assure that we have a limits to be implemented in, 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 uh, in our asset evaluation in IOW. Uh, also, uh, high high level inspection risk uh, inspection task has been generated. So we try to assure all our tasks for all our pressurized equipment uh, is generated and in place as per the risk evaluation done previously. All right, and uh, the big achievement, which is also need to be noticed, in 2015 we have moved from Meridium uh, V3.2 to V3.6 version. Uh, in 2017, well, I will shift to 2017. In 2017, there were like two major turnarounds. We call it a turnaround, okay? So uh, major turnarounds, which basically, where we can collect a majority of our data, where we can basically look into our ex equ uh, equipments and try to get that much of history that we need to implement in our analysis and in our risk evaluations. So we took that, that opportunity to basically evaluate our system, evaluate those assets which has been uh, implemented or which has been covered and come with the risk mitigation actions to be in place. Uh, also, in 2017, we tried to improve our, our inspection report system because uh, we noticed in previous years our inspection report system was not that much implemented well. I mean, not everything that we need or the corrosion engineer need, okay, is in, in the report itself, so it will express whatever coming from that asset. So we tried to improve and look, look, look into those points and try to improve it and have a better uh, reporting system. Uh, in 2019, uh, a good news, we have finally, uh, or an, an announcement has finally made that we will be having our own TL, uh, team lead, okay, which shows the value, okay, the, bi the big value that uh, the company is giving to, to basically to RBI and GEAPM team, which is including reliability and uh, RCM team as well. Uh, also, we have identified the gaps that I told you about that happened during 2015, 2017 with the interfering of the third party. Okay, we have, we have cross-verify, we tried to cross-verify whatever has been in, into the system previously, okay, and try to basically analytic all those data to assure the quality of that uh, data has been implemented in system. So we tried to do this, and we have basically done it for uh, SR2, a, whole, a full plant, and uh, there will be uh, some uh, examples shown by my colleagues here. It will show you how, how big difference made to us, basically. And also, a uh, big achievement also there, we have moved from version 3 to version 3.4. Uh, 
just to mention also, it was an SR1 uh, turnaround uh, at the moment in 2019, and also uh, generating new tasks of our new equipments, whatever has been uh, inspected has been done in 2019. In, 22, in 2022, we have like, uh, started to have our own procedure, our own workflow, that we basically have those criteria, we have those parties to be aligned with and assure that all in place and all are documented and signed by all parties who are interfering in our RBI assessment and RBI analysis. So we are sure to have that in place, the, the, the procedure. And also we have tried to utilize our GE APM by convincing other departments, okay, to basically interfere, like reliability team to interfere, see what features you have in GE APM where you can implement and give a better result. Root cause analysis already implemented with us. We, we do it through GE APM. All right, and uh, we have also uh, cost optimized, uh, also the case, we'll show you the cost optimization done uh, by improving our, our system, by doing the reassessment of SR2. Yeah, uh, thank okay. you, Shihab. I think we moved directly to RPI, but for the non-mechanical engineers or non-integrity engineers, they don't know what does it mean, RPI. So RPI in easy way is a risk assessment and management process that is focused on loss of primary containment from the pressurized equipment due to material deterioration. So all of this deterioration or damage mechanism will be taken care by the RPI for that, especially for the static equipment like a pressure, tanks, heat exchangers, or boilers, fire heaters, and all. So equipment covered under RPI, as I mentioned, all, and acid not covered under RPI, which are instrument controls, electrical system, structural machinery, which will be taken care by different uh, system like RCM reliability and all. So if you see a relationship with the process safety, if we, if we are gonna correlate it with RPI, the process safety pillars, according to the OSHA standards, we have four pillars, and one of them is manage risk. So usually we are managing the risk by doing the inspection. So through RPI recommendation. So here, uh, this is our uh, OQ workflow for defining the RPI or RPI system. It will be started from equipment data list, equipment design data collection. Um, we call it asset integrity database, like all the documents, all the process data, operation data, uh, damage mechanism, and all it will be compiled. Then we will define the corrosion loop which will be defined by our corrosion specialist. So associated with the each and every component that will go under RPI study. Then after that, we will go into probability of failure evaluation. Mainly it will be only from the damage mechanism assigned. And consequence of failure evaluation, it will be from flammable consequence, toxic consequence, or production lost consequence. And then we will run the risk assessment uh, this one, it will be done only by the RPI module in GAPM software, which is already there. And um, we will do some confidence and risk ranking also through APM. We, will rule, uh, we, we at OQ utilizing now semi-quantitative risk assessment that we are utilizing, we are using only, we are ruling up the highest consequence or highest probability. Then it will be ruled up in our risk matrix. Um, Benefits of utilizing RPI instead of time-based inspection, overall reduction in risk for facilities and equipment, which will go under RPI study, and also optimization of the resources. So like uh, Barito principle, they are saying 20 percent, uh, uh, 28 rules. So here we are correlated that with our risk, which is 20% of the risk is associated with, a, sorry, 20% of, 80% uh, of the risk associated with 20% of our assets. So we will give more attention on that. Uh, potential also saving in COPEX and caustic shorter. Um, since we have prioritized our inspection activities, it will lead to 
optimize in inspection resources and all, increase insurance book value. And we at Okio recently also, mm -hmm. we did insurance audit recently last month. And since we are having strong RBI system and asset integrity system, also we could save a lot of money from the insurance company. Uh, also decision making for the management and tool for improving ARC matrix also. This one we call it corporate risk matrix, area reliability committee. Um, limitation of RPI, if you are having, uh, what we are saying is garbage in, garbage out. So if we are ha having lack of data, lack of uh, experienced people, lack of um, uh, operating outside the IOWs or not properly uh, executing the inspection activities, it, it, it will lead to the gap, but not the gap of the RBI, but to the commitment. Uh, here, this is our, uh, this is our uh, RBI dashboard in OQ. So right now, for all the OQ downstream assets, we are having 9,554 assets under RBI study, under RBI system. Out of that, we have 271 uh, process units. Here also the task generating, if we are comparing from 2019 to 2022, we, we increased from 2,540 inspection tasks to 700, to, sorry, 7,560. So, and uh, OQ utilization in G, GE utilization, specifically RPI module, in 2018, it was 50% only, but in 2022, we are uh, reaching to 85% utilization. Uh, here, this is the case from our, we call it SR2 or Sohar Refinery 2. This one, Sohar Refinery, built in 2016 in Sohar, Oman, exactly, Sultanate of Oman. Um, this study had been done by the uh, third party. It was part of the EBC contractor. Then they build the study by, by, by their subject matter expert. But um, then they finalize RPI study, they generate recommendation, they upload all the recommendation into GE. Then after it was approved by the OQ management, the, uh, that uh, RPI recommendation. So after only one year from this, we start receiving some tasks which will require some internal inspection, please stop this equipment, open it for inspection because we, there is a risk. But um, once it was not, um, it was huge amount of recommendation generated with the short interval. So we decided in 2019 to create a committee to have full reassessment of our RPI study. It was in-house. We are taking also GE consultant on that time. So we, 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 we create the committee, we call it RPI committee, consists from operation, process, supply chain, and all which will be involved in our RPI study. Um, after this deep dive into the study, uh, we have run the RPI reassessment through GE for 2044 assets. So out of that four, we optimize 1,320 assets. It means we remove the damage mechanism. All the mechanical engineers are specifically working in asset integrity. They understand what they mean by removing the damage mechanism from the component, RPI component. So the contractor, what we observe, they assign so many damage mechanism which were not um, active to that component since they had taken only design basis for that. But they did not go deeper into the design, material resistance, and all. So we end up to remove, like for an example here, so many damage mechanism removed with touch to us damage, liner <coughs> failure, uh, stress corrosion cracking, and all we removed from the components. So all of that, <coughs> the, for each and every component, there will be inspection plan. So it means out of that, we remove this much of inspection plan to the asset, to that, that number of assets. And also part of it, not only our intention to remove the damage mechanism, but also to add the damage mechanism uh, in order to mitigate the risk. So out of that also, 
we add so many damage mechanisms which were re relevant to that component, and we keep it as a mitigation, risk mitigation, which will end up with inspection task. Uh, so if you see in this slide the summary of damage mechanism removed, or this much of damage mechanism, uh, damage mechanism have been removed. So after this deep dive study, uh, we end up with, to avoid three TAs turnaround. So we, we will avoid three TAs, and also if you, uh, if you count the, uh, the inspection activities resources for that, Three T is it will be around eight thousand three uh, three hundred thirty three uh, U.S. dollars, uh, thousand U.S. dollars, and total production uh, production lost avoided due to this study. It was three three T is for each T A we have to shut down our plant for fourteen days, so we end up to save around four for forty two million U.S. dollars. So inspection cost for those damage mechanisms which have been removed, it's around 16, 16 million US dollars. So total value saving for 3T is avoidance around 59 million USD. So this is the basis of calculation based on each and every damage mechanism. There will be inspection techniques. So. Uh, for an example, the UT inspection, it cost us around 70 US dollar for each shift and all. So tube inspection around 200 USD per day and creep inspection, it will be around 330 USD per day and all. Abdullah, uh, also good to mention that also this optimization done is only done for one planet, which is SR2 that we have. So now we are doing a reassessment for almost all our plants, which is not that much uh, consensus of like quality data. So after doing all this, imagine how much optimizing of our inspection that we will do just by utilizing GEAPM in a well way. Yeah, the, uh, so Mr. Shihab, you yeah, can so continue. It's just a slide showing that uh, a continuous improvement tool, RBI is a continuous improvement tool, as we all know, it's due to its dynamic uh, improvement. It's changing in all operating uh, condition. And also the IOW, how it's affecting also our, our, our dynamic in RBI, in triggering basically RBI and the conditioning happening in, in our assets, which might also trigger RBI. So all those continuous improvement supposed to be taken care in, 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 in continuous basis. Uh, in, 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 our, in our company there. And also for the uh, integrated management tool, uh, as mentioned, integrating our platform is very important. So for example, uh, PHA, IOW, and RCM to be integrated. Yeah. IOW, if there is any violation for an extent time, for maybe for example, like this asset, we, have, we, can, we can let it exceed our violation, for example, for one week. After one week, it will affect our risk. Then we need to do a reassessment based on that. So an integration of those platforms, it will be a very nice evergreening if we do it uh, in our company. Yes, so I think that's all from our side, from our shared experience. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.